<clears throat> Hello, everyone. This hour on Verbling, the next in my pronunciation practice series, series of classes, that is. Today, we're going to have a good one, all about compound nouns, words that are, in fact, one word that is, in fact, two words. We're going to look at where we stress the words, and if that word stress, where you put the emphasis on the word, changes in different situations. And we'll practice it, and if we have time, I'll play a little game at the end that'll help get this into your, into your memory and, into your, and out of your mouth as fast as possible. So all of that and more coming up in just a minute. First, quick introduction while we're waiting for people to come in. Uh, my name's John Eric. I'm your verbling teacher for this hour, and I'm an American teacher from New York, coming at you today from Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. By the way, if you click on that link in the chat window, you can go to my homepage where you can follow me, clicking on the follow button to see all my upcoming group classes. You can stay uh, up to date about what's going on. Of course, you can also... Uh, you can also, uh, what's the word, book a private tutoring lesson. Uh, but I just ask that you send me a message first so I can find time for you in my schedule. Every week is a little different. This week I have time, but you never know. <laughs> it fills up fast. So send me a message first so I can make time for you and we will get started. So let's, let's get started with Ms. Sabrina. Hello, Sabrina. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Can you hear me okay, Sabrina? Yes. Hello, hello. Hello. Uh -oh. Hello. I don't hear Sabrina. Hello. Can you hear? Hello, Sabrina. Hello. Mm. Uh oh, maybe we're having sound problems. What about you, Javier? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, perfect. I can hear you. Hello, hello. Can, can you anyone hear me? hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Mm, maybe you. we are having sound problems. Uh, let's see. Can so, you tell me? you what, everyone. Right in the chat window. Can you hear me? Okay. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Sabrina says yes, but I cannot hear you. I'll tell you what, let me come back in just a second because I can't hear you. Maybe there's a maybe there's some issue with the uh, with the hangout, okay? So give me just a second and I'll be right back. Okay? Now I can hear you. Hello. Hello, Sabrina. <laughs> Hello, Joe. How are you? <laughs> I don't know what happened, but now it seems like it's working now. That's the important thing. Okay. Good we can hear you. And Javier, how are you, Javier? I'm well, thank you. What about you? Pretty good, pretty good. Okay. All right. So let me get let me just get my name back on the board. Everything has to reload. Give me just a second. And, oh, I have to open the uh, presentation again. One second. 
John? I know what the problem is. Yes. No, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Go why ahead. do you why do you live in Portugal? Uh I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you did, did you choose? Did you <laughs> it's like it. Portugal chose me. It wasn't my it wasn't uh, my fault. Okay. Uh, my wife is Portuguese. Ah. Uh -huh. Because this is speak. I guess that I guess that could be a reason. Uh, <laughs> give me a second here. And is that working? Yeah, there you go. Now you know who I am. Look at that. Hey, where is where is where are the other uh seven people? <laughs> I always find it strange that people sign up and then they don't actually show up to the class. Maybe they'll be here soon. Okay. Uh Let's see. Let's get started here, everyone. So, in this unit, we started off talking about the TH sound, and we connected many different things to the first lesson. So, let's take a quick overview. Um, we're in our third lesson in this unit, and we're talking about stress and intonation. What do I mean by stress and intonation? <laughs> Let's make sure that that makes sense before we go on. What is word stress? Sabrina, what is word stress? Uh, where the syllable, mm -hmm. you put more um, intonation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the stronger syllable. We could also say the stronger syllable is the stress. Good. Okay. Just want to make sure it's clear. And intonation relates to the word tone. So Javier, what is a tone in music? Just so that I know it's clear. If I say intonation, I'm talking about the tone of your voice. So what is the tone of your voice? Or what is a tone in music, Javier? What would you say? The tone in music is the, the rhythm. Well, no, it's not the rhythm, but it's... Uh... It's the other part. You got the rhythm, which is like the beat. Yeah. Give me a high tone. Let me hear a high tone. High tone. Yeah. High tone. No, it's, high tone. It's give, me a, uh, give me a low tone. Give me a low tone now. <laughs> yeah, depends. Yeah. It as well depends on the strength uh, or uh, the strongest. Yeah, the strongest or not the the sound, no? The sound. Mm -hmm. Well, let's say let's sound. say this: if it's strong or weak, it's stress. If it's high, high or low, low, then it's intonation. Just yeah. so we can okay. differentiate the two, okay? So mm -hmm. stress, strong or weak, like this. Is it is it record or is it record? So if it's record, the stress is on the first syllable and it's a noun. I'm going to play the record. Disco, disco. If it's record, it's a verb and the stress is on the second syllable. So that's strong and weak. And intonation is high and low. So a high tone, if you sing a high tone, you are a soprano. And if you sing a low tone, you are a bass or maybe a tenor. Okay? Just to make sure that's clear, because I think that maybe, maybe in the description of the class, when people see stress and intonation, they think they have to know something technical to be in the class, but you don't. It just means strong and weak, high and low. Okay, and here's the thing. The way you stress words in your language is completely different in a language like English. See, that's the problem. People try to carry over the natural way of speaking, but it doesn't sound right in another language. Um, I can give a really good example of this. Uh, so, for example, uh, what's your native language, Javier? Spanish. Of course. <laughs> and uh, where did you grow up, Javier? Where? In uh, Barcelona. In Barcelona. Catalonia. Yeah, Catalonia. Catalonia. Yeah. Do you speak Catalan as well? Catalan as well, yeah. Oh. Ah, okay. I'm not so, so, 
Does Catalan sound like Spanish? No, no. Quite, quite different, right? Quite different, yeah. It's a dialect, yeah. And does Castellano, Castellano sound? I mean, does the Spanish that the common Spanish does, does that sound different to you than the Spanish in, say, Mexico? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, even in that way, you can see that there's different intonation and different word stress between mm. the United States and England. It's the same thing, mm -hmm. and and I'm sure. Sabrina, you would have difficulty understanding my Portuguese, <laughs> not just because I speak badly, but also because it's <laughs> it's continental. Because it's, totally, it's totally different. It's very different. I have a hard time understanding Brazilian Portuguese. I'm getting better at it, but it's it's difficult, um, and because of pronunciation and because it seems to me like Brazilian Portuguese is more like music. And really? more musical, seems to me. And the Portuguese they speak here is more about the stress. Like Brazilian Portuguese seems more about the intonation. It seems more important. Maybe I'm wrong. It's just my impression. Certain languages are much more related to intonation, and others are more related to stress. Like Italian is a musical language. The the rhythm and the intonation is very important. English is a stress based language. The word stress carries the meaning more. Anyway, enough theory. I just want to make sure that those two things are clear and give everyone a chance to come into class. All you people out there, come on in. Plenty of room. We're going to do lots of practical things. So, there are two types of compound nouns we're going to see. That means nouns that have two parts uh, and they have two different pronunciation patterns. Whether it's a noun and a noun or an adjective and a noun. And we'll see what that means in just a second. Okay? So, that's a quick overview. Let's go to part three of the unit, which I put on slide. Where is it? Slide 13. So, if you want to open this up in your browser, whoops, let me give you the link. Go right to slide 13, and you'll be able to see this up close. So, Sabrina, read the directions for us on the top left. Uh, unit 7, uh, the TH sound and spelling, the stress in compounds with nouns and adjectives. Match words in box A and B below to make the objects shown in the pictures. Write the words under the pictures. Okay, pretty easy, right? So, how, Javier, how many words should go in the line under each picture? How many words? How many? Two words. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And the first one's done for you. Sabrina, say the first one for us. Mobile phone. Mm. You say no. mobile phone. I say mobile phone. My mobile no, uh, English is English, uh, England, no? Yeah. Okay. British, British English is more of an I, mobile. I say mobile, mobile phone. And in fact, in America, we don't even say mobile phone, we say cell phone. No, cell phone. Like, yeah. like, like there. Okay, Javier, what do you think matches with B? With B? <laughs> What does that, let's clarify, what does that object do, Javier? In B, what does that thing, what does it do? What's the purpose? The purpose is to open uh, open bottles, no? Mm -hmm. And what's, what's stopping mm. the liquid from coming out of the bottle? It's stopping the yeah. cork, no? The cork, fantastic. Yes. Yeah, so, so you got 50% of the word. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sc uh, screw cork, screw cork, screw cork, screw cork, no, no, <laughs> no, no, get, uh, no, no, cork opener, yeah, cork opener, sure. <laughs> you got, you got, you got it the first I can, time. I cannot open you, the, 
Ah, uh, no, I, I couldn't open the, the, the document, and so I have problems to, to see the, the last, the some words in, in B, yeah, so that's why, I think it's cork opener, no, or opener cork, or something like that. I think that. you got it the first time, but you got it backwards. What did you say the first time? Uh, cork screw. No. There you go. There you ah, go. Cork screw. Cork screw. Okay, cork screw. Give me a second here. Click. Click John. Okay, very good. So the first one is a corkscrew. Okay. Uh, where's C? Oh, C is on the top. Sorry, C is in the wrong place. C is on the top uh, right side. Um, Sabrina, what is that object in C? Can you see what that is? C in the... But for me, it's a Walkman. <laughs> it's a what? Walkman. It is a Walkman. Absolutely, mm -hmm. you're right. Give me so. Give me just a second, because I need to help someone here. Okay. S Stephanie, if you can hear me, if you can hear me, then close your browser. Close your browser and try again. Oh, there's there's Van Ann. Close your Browser and re oh reopen it and then try. Okay, hopefully that will help. And Van Ann, can you hear us? Okay. Hello, Van Ann. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Are those your fingers, by the way? <laughs> Van Ann, are those your fingers? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. I got this picture from the internet. Ah, okay. Because you look different today, so that's why. I thought maybe these were your fingers. So, we're learning about word stress and intonation. Um, Sabrina, that thing in letter C, you said, is a, is a Walkman, right? Yes, but they don't have this word in the... It's weird because on um, my screen, oh, yeah, I see it now. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so you've got to give a second guess. Yeah, you've got to give a second guess. There is no Walkman. Yeah, personal thing. Personal? Tin. Tin? Tin? T-I-N? Yes. But a tin is a latte. Ah, okay. Mm. Uh oh. <laughs> what else could it be? What do you call the big thing, the speakers, in your living room? You can play CDs, you can play records, you can play the radio. What do you call that radio. big thing? Say again? Radio. Well, radio is part of it. But you don't have to play the radio. You could also play a CD or, or any other format. But what's the whole thing called? Because it's got two speakers, just like the Walkman has two speakers. So you hear sound from two different sides. Portable answering. Say again? Portable answering. Portable. Second word is? Answering. Answering. For, for C? Why do you say that? It's the first word in the exercise. Portable answering. No, yes. no, no. Portable and answering are two separate words. You have to match A with B. Right? So A, for example, A is cork oh, okay. and, and B is screw for, for letter B. For C, portable could work. Right, that's one possibility. So, what letter in B is the name of the object itself? Stereo. Exactly. <laughs> now you got it. Now you got it. Yeah, maybe I wasn't clear. We're matching. Uh, no, no, a to I'm B. really sleeping. It's very early here. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're going to say portable stereo. If it wasn't portable, what else could it be? Because there maybe is another one. By the way, portable stereo works for me. 
but there might be another way to say it. We'll think about it and we'll come back in just a second. Okay. okay. So, Van Ann, take a look at letter D. What kind of thing is that in letter D? Oh, Remember, you're, you're creating a compound noun by matching okay. uh, the words in A to the words in B. Mm -hmm. So, it is uh, an electric vacuum. It is not an electric vacuum, <laughs> but it is a vacuum. But you've got to match vacuum to a word in B. Look at all those words below in B. B. Yeah. yeah. You've got mm -hmm. screw, phone, machine, TV, cleaner, opener, kettle, and stereo. Oh, okay. So vacuum. Mm. So that is... Uh, sorry, I don't understand how. Uh, what are we? What we have to do here? You you were absolutely correct, except you were matching the words A to each other. Oh, yeah, but you got to match A way. to B. Look below, mm -hmm. look below. So this is the vac vacuum cleaner. There you go, there you go. As you do this class, notice where the word stress is. Vacuum cleaner. Repeat after me. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Not vacuum cleaner. Listen. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. That's it. So, so notice where the word stress is. We'll come back and we'll go through this again and you'll see that there's a rule here. Okay? But notice that it's not vacuum cleaner. It's vacuum cleaner. Imagine you're going down the stairs. Dun, dun, dun. Going down a little further. Three steps. Vacuum cleaner. You're going down three steps. High, middle, low. Vacuum cleaner. Okay? Very good, Van Ann. Okay. And Mr. Jose, I want you to take a look at the object in letter E. This is on the left side. Okay? Yes. Letter E. Yeah. Okay. Now you're going to create a compound noun by matching the words in A on the right with the words in B, which is below on the right. Yes. Okay? So what do you think okay. is the best fit for letter for letter E? By the way, it's a little hard it's a little hard to see what that picture is. Yes. What is the, what is the purpose of that object? Before you tell us what it Open, is. Uh, well, yes. The purpose of this object could be uh, open a tin. Perfect. Could yes. be could be or is. Is is open a tin. Exactly. So what is it then? I think uh, tin tin yeah. uh, right. open open it open it. Opener. Opener. Tin Good. opener. Good. And where is the stress? On the first, second, tin opener. That's got four syllables. Where do you think the stress tin is? Tin opener. Tin opener. Tin o p in the third syllable. Tin opener? No. No. Sorry, sorry. Tin opener in the Good. first. Exactly. First. 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 You got it. You got it. Now, are you starting to see a pattern about where, when, this, when the compound noun has the stress clearly on the first okay. syllable? Are you starting the, to see a pattern? In this case, in the first syllable. Mm -hmm. And let's see if we can figure out what the rule is, because there's some kind of a rule here. Okay, let's go back to Javier for F. What is the purpose of that thing in F, Javier? F, uh, it's a TV, no? It's to watch uh, films and programs. So... It, it is. It is a TV. It's but, a TV. It's a, but it's a little TV. <laughs> Tiny. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm going to say portable TV. Fantastic. Portable TV. And where is the stress in portable TV? In the first uh, word, no? Portable TV. Portable TV. How about this? How about portable TV? What if I change it like that? Portable TV. Portable. Oh, I'm saying it wrong. I'm sorry, Javier. Let me say it again. Sorry. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Portable TV. There we go. Portable TV. 
Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So it's the second one. I don't know. Portable TV. Portable TV. Portable TV. Let me ask you this: Are there one, two, or more stresses in that word? Portable TV. Portable TV. There are two stresses. No one there in the portable two. TV. Portable. That's right. Portable. One in the poor and one in the V. V. Portable V. TV. Portable TV. That's it. Very good. Good ears, Javier. Very good. Uh, I lost my place. I don't know where I'm going. I think Sabrina, you're next. I could be wrong. <laughs> so I think it's you. EFG. What is the purpose of G? What does it do? What do you do with that object in G? Um, coffee or tea? Do what with coffee or tea? Drink it? Yes. Drink it? Or make it? Okay, make. Yeah. It might be a little hot to drink out of. Be careful. <laughs> You're going to burn yourself. Be careful. Okay. And it's got a little cable running out the back. So that tells you what kind of object it is. What kind of object is it, Sabrina? Electric. Mm -hmm. And the second word? Can you see below? In B? Screw, phone, machine, TV, all those words? Yes, Which yes. Is but uh, nothing has the coffee or tea. <laughs> huh? Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> Do me a favor, Sabrina. Say the words you see in B. Because maybe you're not seeing the whole screen. Say the words that you see down there in B. Screen? Screw? Yeah? Cleaner. Cleaner. Cleaner, yeah. Phone opener? No, no, it's not phone opener. It's phone opener. There's a separate words. They're not together. Okay, okay. Yeah. Phone opener. Right. Machine. Mm -hmm. Kettle. What's a kettle? I don't know, really. Ah. <laughs> It's that thing, Sabrina. It's that thing. Electric kettle. Oh, okay. Mm. It's an electric kettle. A kettle makes a kettle heats water. Okay. How do you say that in Portuguese? I don't know the word. Cafeteira. Cafeteira. Ah. Yes. But but <laughs> do you, oh, I didn't know that. But and do you can you make tea in a cafeteria or you only make coffee in a cafeteria? Uh, it's possible to make tea. Oh, after. Okay. <laughs> the name is uh, different, but it's possible. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. Anyway, okay. So kettle is just means that you heat water and you can do whatever you want with it, mostly okay. for tea. So it's an electric kettle. So, okay. so repeat after me. Electric kettle. Electrical kettle. Electric kettle. Yeah. By the way, not electric k. There's no k at the end. Electric kettle. Okay. Electric kettle. Perfect. That's it. That's it. And let's see. I think we're on to the last one now. So, Van Am, the very last thing. Something that you might not see nowadays, but way back when I was young and there were dinosaurs roaming the streets, everyone had one of these things. What is, mm -hmm. what's the purpose of the contraption in letter H, Ben Ann? Mm, I think that is the, the answering machine. I think you are right. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a telephone. It looks like a telephone. Because it's, by the way, my telephone looks exactly like that, so so they still exist. My telephone is not that old. It looks exactly like that. Uh, it's supposed to look like a telephone with a little machine inside of it, and uh, the machine used to record things on a little cassette. You know, when you watch movies about the old days, there were dinosaurs and answering machines and things like that. Nowadays, we don't have these things. Now, tell me, Van Am. Actually, first, just repeat. Answering machine. 
answering answering machine. That's right. Is there is there one stress that stands out? Yes. Is there one stress that's stronger yes. than all the other syllables? Uh, Where is yeah, it? Yeah, one stress uh, on answering. One stress and mm -hmm. and exactly. Answering uh, the stress is on and. Correct. Okay. So you'll notice that different words have different stresses, and there's a reason for it. Before I tell you that reason, or you figure it out, I just want to hear you say these words correctly. I'll say them, and you repeat. Shout them out. Here we go. Mobile phone. Repeat. Mobile phone. Only one person is repeating? What about Javier and Sabrina and Jose? Ah, okay, okay. Shout it out. Mobile, mobile phone. phone. Mobile phone. Mo mobile phone. No. Not mobile. Okay. If mobile. You, mobile phone. American English, mobile phone. Mobile, mobile phone. phone. Got it. Mobile phone. Yeah. Excellent. Mobile Excellent. phone. B is corkscrew. Corkscrew. Good. Corkscrew. Good. Good. Corkscrew. Okay. By the way, you can say it at the same time. I'll be able to hear you if you want. The next, this is all about speed now. The next is personal stereo. Personal, personal stereo. stereo. Fantastic. The next is vacuum cleaner. Vacuum, vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Perfect. Everyone sounds good. The next is tin opener. Tin opener. Tin opener. Good. Tin is British English. In American English, we would say can opener. Can opener. Can opener. Can opener. That's can opener. Okay, sounds good. The next one has two stresses, so listen carefully. Portable TV. One more portable time. One more time. TV. Portable TV. Go. Portable TV. Portable TV. Good. Excellent. The next has two stresses again, so listen carefully. I'm going to say it twice. Electric kettle. Electric kettle. Electric kettle. Electric kettle. Good. Electric kettle. Okay, and Sabrina, say it again. Electric kettle. Electric kettle. Electric kettle. Okay, very good, very good. And the next one, the last one is one stress only. Answering machine. Answering machine. Answering machine. Okay, sounds good. Now, let's find out why. Okay, here it says listen and check your answers. Well, you just listened and we practiced. Say again and practice compound nouns. Okay, you said it again, no problem. Javier, I want you to read the rules in that box on the left side of the screen, please. There are two types of compound noun. Notice the different stress patterns. Noun slash gerund plus noun, cork screw, answering machine, adjective plus noun, mobile phone. Mm -hmm. Or mobile phone. Mobile, ah, yeah. mobile phone, yeah. Mobile. Right. So in other words, if you've got two nouns together, there's only one stress. Wow, who knew there was a rule like this? Who knew? If there's an adjective, don't fall asleep, Javier. I hear you yawning. Don't fall asleep. I hear. <laughs> if there's an adjective in a noun, two stresses. Did I just blow your mind or what? There's an actual right way to say these words. Who knew? This is exciting. Isn't this exciting? Are you excited? I'm excited. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, you're going to go through those words on the right side and according to the rule, say them very clearly. Are there two nouns? By the way, by the way, a gerund is also a noun. So keep that in mind. Okay? So you're going to go through those words and we're going to find out uh, if you're right or wrong. But first, we're going to say hello to Mr. Vincenzo, who has a haircut. Look at that. Mr. Vincenzo has a brand new haircut. Did you get your haircut, Vincenzo? It looks like oh, you did. Yes. I uh, thought so. A few days ago, you, a few days ago, teacher. You were looking dapper. 
Mr. Vincenzo. Dapper. Oh, okay. Dapper. Good. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's very good. You like it? <laughs> it looks much better than look much better than I do. That's why oh. I turn my camera I turn my camera off. Yes, I'm glad. <laughs> okay. Dapper, because he's a ladies' man. Yeah. Look, here, look, there's the word in the chat window. <laughs> you can tell everyone that you are a Dapper Dan. I'm a Dapper Dan. Look what at my hair. What is it, Dapper Dan? I don't a know. lady killer. Good a lady. <laughs> a lady killer. Oh, <laughs> yes, like uh, Rudy, Rudy Valentine. <laughs> exactly. Oh. <laughs> I can I can make a conquest. A conquest. <laughs> <to do it>. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps I have to go to Spain in order to make something to do something. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to say. Maybe so, Ibiza. Okay. What do you think? What do you think? Ibiza. Yeah, that's a good hunting ground. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree. Yes. Dapper. Have you ever been there? Could, could, could you write down the, this word, uh, John? Oh, I did. Did you see it in the chat window? Uh, I wrote. I wrote. Uh, I don't see. Are you? Ah, yeah, are yeah, you? yeah, 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 yeah. She's clear. Yes. So dapper has to do with, you know, your dapper, appearance. Dapper. Okay. It could be. It could be your your hair. It could be also your clothes. Dapper, well dressed, lady killer. So basically, it means well dressed, basically, or well groomed as well. Well dressed or okay. Well. Groomed. Okay, now Mr. Vincenzo left to go chase the girls. <laughs> we had him here, but we lost him. Maybe he'll be back soon. Uh, you know, it seems like the earlier I teach, the the more people have trouble with the hangouts. I don't know what's going on. It seems like later in the afternoon we don't have these problems. Dapper Dan, are you back? Let's see. Are you back, Mr. Vincenzo? I see you, but I don't hear you. Just say something so I know your microphone works. Yes. Ah, okay. Got it. I have some problem with my connection. <laughs> yes. Everyone's having problems today, it seems. So listen, we just learned a rule. We practiced a little bit, and we learned an important rule. And that rule is summarized on the left side of the screen. Okay? Pronto. Pronto. Uh oh. Uh oh. I hear too much Italian. I have to turn off your microphone for a second. Okay, let's go around the room. Venan, A. Tell me which it follows. Will A or will B? Mm. Uh, the, the rule with uh, one stress. Okay, so say it for me. Uh, uh, headphones. Absolutely. And it's one stress because you're correct, but why? Uh, because that is two nouns. There are two Head nouns. And yeah. Head is a noun, phone is a noun. Perfect. Okay. Jose, do B for us. Okay. Computer game. View. Mm -hmm. The second Pew. one. Exactly. So, how many stresses total? One or more? One. One, one only. O you only can... one. Only one. That's right. So, your answer and Van Ann's answer are the same. There's only one word stress. Very good. Okay. And Vincenzo, to get the rule, just look on the left side. You'll notice that we learned if there's two nouns together, there's only one stress. Look on mm -hmm. the left side. Yes. If there's an adjective and a noun together, and it forms this two-part word, what we call a compound noun. Yeah. That means that there's going to be two equal stresses. This is really subtle. It's not obvious. So if someone really has to show it to you. But it makes a big difference. Because it really you can really hear when people don't know this rule, right? It really makes a difference. This really makes you sound like a native speaker. Native speakers do this automatically, but it's a big difference to say computer game than computer game. You know, <laughs> like my Spanish students always put the stress at the end, computer game, uh, but it's computer game. So I think this is a really good way to sound advanced in the language. Mr. Javier, 
What about C? Two nouns or adjective noun? Coffee maker. Coffee maker. Don't try to talk. Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah. So if it's two nouns, how many stresses? One or two? Just one. Yeah. And where is it? Coffee maker. I, I would say uh, co. Coffee maker. Exactly. On the call. Coffee, coffee maker. maker. Exactly. Okay. Mr. Vincenzo, it's your moment to shine. Try letter D on the yeah. right side. Electric razor. Electric razor. Electric razor. Okay. Now, yeah. here's the moment of truth. Is yeah. there a noun in a noun or is there an adjective in a noun? An electric razor. Yeah, I think it's an adjective and an and a noun. You are correct. Yeah. yeah so right. does so that means that there's two stresses in that ah, word. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah, so, yeah. where are the two stresses? Oh. Because you have electric, which is three syllables, and you have razor, which is two syllables. I I would say electric razor. Perfect. Electric, electric razor. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So, on the second syllable of electric and on the first syllable yeah. of razor, yeah. electric yeah. razor. Electric razor. Yeah. You got it. You got it. Okay, Van Ann, what about E? E. Dishwasher. One syllable or two? One. Correct. Dishwasher. Dishwasher. Excellent. Sabrina, F. Washing machine. Good. One syllable or two? One stress or two, I'm sorry. One stress or two? I believe one. But one. Interesting. You're right. <laughs> yeah, You're it's washing uh, gerunds, correct? Correct. Okay. So, it's like a noun. I'm going to do the washing. It's a noun here. So, it's not a, it's, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's, I can explain it, but it doesn't matter. It's not an adjective here. It's a yeah. gerund. So, washing machine. Repeat after me. Washing machine. Washing machine. Exactly. If it was an adjective, it would be washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to put a second stress on the e in a machine. Like, for example, um, it's really I can't even think of a sentence for it to make sense. Because when do you when when do you ever when do you use it as an adjective? You really don't. So forget it. What you said was right. It's a gerund, one stress on the first word. Washing machine. Perfect. You said it right. And Jose, what about G? G. Okay. Um, digital television. In the, in the first word, the first one, and in the second word, the first one. Because uh, they are two, two nouns. They are not two nouns. They no, are no. an adjective and a an noun. Uh, okay, right. adjective and a noun. Okay, the, mm -hmm. the first word, the stress is digital, D, and the right. second one, television. Mm -hmm. On the, the tell. On the tell. tell. On the tell. That's the right. The stress is on the tell. That's right. Adjective, so, no. Okay. That's right. So two stresses. Digital television. Correct. You got it. You got okay. it. And Javier, what about H? H. I would say adjective plus uh, noun, no? Correct. Central heating. No? Mm -hmm. central Good. Heating. Central heating. Central heating. Both on the first syllable. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. Okay. And Vincenzo, what about I? Letter I. CD player, CD player, uh, CD player, uh, I don't know, the, the, it seems that there is no accent. CD well, uh, CD don't, 
don't guess at it. Don't guess. Just decide if it's noun, noun, or adjective noun. Be it's analytical. A, it's a, a noun and a, a verb. Like a, 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 no, 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 no. Two noun, two noun. Two nouns. Two nouns. Yeah. So that means that there's only one stress. Yeah. Not two stresses, one stress. And the stress is always on the first word if it's two nouns. So say it one more time with only one stress. CD player. Okay, it's not bad. You can be even more, you can stress the first word even more. I mean. Can, oh, hang on a second. Uh, CD player. CD player. On ah, the D. A CD player. CD player. That's it. CD player. Mm. Okay. Uh, officially, that's how you're supposed to stress it. Of course, everyone speaks a little differently. So, CD player. CD player, CD. I think if I think I would naturally say CD player on the C. But anyway, officially it's supposed to be on the D. It seems that this the stress is on the play. No, the no, play. no, no, it's not on the player. No, no, for sure it's not on the second word. Because I only play CD player. But it can't be. It can't be on the second word because that would break the rule. So it's got to be on the C or on the D. Okay. And Venn, mm -hmm. what about J? Jay, I think is the video recorder. Mm -hmm. uh, video recorder. Um, the stress, the stress is, is on the, the first one, the, v, the video. V. Oh, the vid. Not vid, yeah. but vid. Yeah. Eh, eh. vid. Video. Video. Good. But vid. say, but I got to hear the E too, so video. Video. That's it. Good. Because I wasn't hearing the EO. And I have to hear the EO at the end. Good. Video recorder. You got it. Video. Uh, perfect. Perfect. And Sabrina, the last one. K. Fan heater. Fan heater. Okay. Uh, now, noun or adjective noun? Noun. Noun plus noun. Good. So, how many stresses? One or two? One. Correct. Where is it? Fan. Correct. Say it again. Fan written. Fan, fan what? Fan written. Written. It's, no, no, it's heater. Heater. <laughs> heater. When you heat up a quesador, heater. Okay, heater. Fan so written. That, fan written. Like this. Let me hear you say the H, though. Fan heater. Fan reader. No, I'm hearing reader with an R. Uh, Try it like uh, this. Say it like this. Say he. Like he and she. He. 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 Good. It's better. It's the wrong H, but it still sounds better because you're going he in your throat. It's actually not. By the way, there's three H's in English. So this one. Is, is formed kind of like behind your teeth. She. Hey. It's okay. Hey. It's good. It's good. But it's a different H. It's not wrong. Because I, I think it's easier if you, if you make that sound. It's a little bit... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easier hey. to say it that way. Fan heater. Fan heater. Fan heater. Good. So not in your throat, because that's hard to do. But here in your mouth, fan heater. Heater. That's it. Heater. Good. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, lost my page. Oh, here we are. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want you to practice this in a fast-paced, interesting activity. I've actually got something else for you to do, but let's not worry about that. No, let's forget about that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you. A, I'm going to give you each a set of words, and I want to see if you can match each other up and create a compound noun. So I'm going to give you each a word, and you're going to see if you can create uh, a compound noun and use it in a sentence. The first person to be able to use their word in a sentence gets a point. Whoever gets the most points wins the magic cookie. <laughs> I have a lot of cookies to send out. One day I'll get to it. One day. Give me a second. Give me a second. Chocolate. Okay. Uh, 
they're magic. <laughs> they're whatever you want to be. If you want it to be chocolate, it's chocolate. Oh, okay, thank you. It's whatever you want. Okay. What is the teacher? <laughs> Perhaps he is doing some cookies. I don't know. Is <laughs> <laughs> <He's> doing cookies? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Ah, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear hello? me? Yes. Yeah. We can hear you. Yes, okay, indeed. I'm back. Okay, I accidentally closed <laughs> the wrong window. Okay, give me just a second to get myself back on the screen. Right now, I just see Vincenzo and no one else. Give me a second. But at least I get to see his great haircut. That's the important thing. Give me a second. Oh, my goodness. Everything is frozen. So here's what I'm going to do. While I'm waiting for this to load, I'm going to give you each a word. The first person to create a compound noun and say it correctly gets a point. Ah, now i got everything loaded. Okay. Can everyone see the verbling chat window? See. Can it? Can anyone? Yes, can yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. So, I'm going to go just right around the room. Uh, Javier, your word is this. I'm going to give a one to each of you. Uh, Jose? Jose? Do I have you, to create a word, yeah, or no? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. You have to find a partner in the room. If ah, you okay. can... If you can find a partner and create not only a word but a but a co correct sentence and correct pronunciation, then you get the cookie. Mm. We'll see how many rounds we can do this in. Van Ann, gonna put a little van. This is your word, okay? And let's see. And uh, Vincenzo, this is your word. I'm gonna put it's because it's shorter. Can you find a partner in round one? Can you find a partner? In order to make more... Uh, in words. order to make a compound noun, yes. More, more compound nouns, yes, mm -hmm. in the partner. Yes. Can you find a partner in this room? Yes. Based on yes. the words that I gave you. Can anyone find a partner? Yes. I choose... Uh, Van Han. Okay. So, let's see if either or both of you can make a sentence. Yeah, yeah. yeah the okay, go for yes. it. Go, go, go for it. The first one that I come, comes in mind is fireworks. Fireworks. Hang on a fireworks. second. So you got Finch. You got fire. Good. And Van mm. Ann has foot. So that would only be Firefoot if you connected with her. Firefoot. Fireworks is a good word, though, but it doesn't match with Van Ann. <laughs> so uh, uh, let's, let's change the rules a little bit. Even if you can't find a partner, right, you can still make a compound noun if you see one, but you've got to tell me who the two people are. So Van Ann, do you have an idea? An idea? What do you think, Anna? Not for now. No? Um, really? Nobody? Okay. Can, can I make up a word? Like, um, my word is foot, so uh, I'll come up with uh, football. You can came I, up with can football. 
You just did. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I would then, say fi fire stop. You, uh, you would say you would say fire stop. Okay. Is fire stop a thing? I know. Well, I guess, guess what? In round one, nobody gets the point because fly, <laughs> fly, fly stop is possible. Uh, yeah. Say again, Jose. Fly stop. No, it's not. <laughs> round round one. Oh. Round one is zero. Nobody Beautiful. got it. <laughs> I think uh, Jose, Jose and Vin, Vincent can Vincenzo can 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 be a. a but it's a, if, but the fi firework is a, it's not a compound word, no. It's uh, true, it? but no, it is. But Vanen, what's the word? Uh, flying fire. <laughs> flying fire. My fire. I, uh, <laughs> Try again. You're almost there. Almost yeah. there. Fly fire. <laughs> Fly fire. Oh my God. Okay, round one is zero. The answer is <laughs> firefly. 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 Like this. Yeah. Firefly. Like that. I'll give you a sentence. At night, the fireflies lit up. At night, the fireflies lit up. Have you ever ah. been in a field and you ah. saw those little glowing ah, yes, bugs? Yes, oh, yes, right, yes, right, yes. Right, yeah. yes. I yes, remember yes, I the word. <laughs> yes, we say, we say lucciole, lucciole in Italian. Lucciole. Lucciole. Okay. Yes. Let's see who gets the point in round two. In round two. Okay. So, let's see. Ha Javier. I'm just going to put J-A-V. Javier, your word is moon. Okay. Let's see. Uh, okay, Jose, your word is black. Van Ann, your word is. Give me a second here. This is. Okay, Van Ann, your word is this. Okay, and Vincenzo, your word is. Give me a second. Your word is. I gotta find a faster way to do this. This is easy, but five words are two words or one word? One word. I'm sorry. Say again. Five work is a. Fireworks. One word. Words. One word. One word. word. Ah. Fireworks. Okay. Usually black, plural. Black, um, blackboard. Blackboard. Jose said it first. Jose, you win the cookie in round two. Can you use it in a sentence? Yes. In class, um, I saw on hanging on the wall a blackboard. In the, in the class, yes. I saw a blackboard. I saw a blackboard hanging on the wall. Hanging on the wall. Okay. Not I saw hanging on the wall yes. a blackboard. Okay. Okay. I saw a blackboard uh, hanging on the wall. Excellent. Okay. Uh, round three, we're going to go with Van Ann's rules. Yeah. Van Ann says we should just make up words. So let's do mm. it. <laughs> okay. So, Van Ann, your word, I want you to, to see if you can make a compound word from this. Okay. Jose, your, yes. Jose you're going to do this. We've only got a minute, so you got to be fast. Uh, uh, let's see. Javier, your word is this. And finally, um, uh, Vincenzo, your word is this. I want to hear four compound nouns. And we've got 30 seconds. You've got to go fast. Checklist. Checklist. Perfect. Sunburn. Say again. Sunburn. Sunburn. Excellent. Jose. Something with cut. Javier. Cut, wow, Jose is cut, cut oh. hair. Cut hair? Switch Train it. stop. Train uh, stop. Train stop doesn't exist. Uh, okay. <laughs> Train <laughs> stop doesn't exist. Train yeah. station exists. Train stop check doesn't up. exist. Check up. Check up. Check up. Check out. Checklist. Check out, checklist. All of those. Very good. And Jose, not 
not cut hair, but haircut. Right? You got to switch it. Haircut. Yes, haircut. Excellent. Okay. I want you to keep creating compound nouns until I see you in the next class. Okay? I got to check up with you in 30 seconds when I start our business basics class on the power of introverts. Ooh, this is going to be an interesting one. So check it out. Bye for now, everyone. See you soon. Okay. Bye see for you. now. Bye bye. Okay.